G'day everybody, this is the final part of the Echo Base um, Diorama Rebuild thing that I'm doing. Uh, where we left, we had all the foam in place and I'd laid out the layout for the where the bits and pieces and all the, the scattery bits that I put. So I went outside and um, sprayed the base white ready for painting. I sprayed black and then a grey over the top of everything else. Um, I put a glue on the bottom of the foam in case I was going to use a spray adhesive, but in the end I've used hot glue to get it down, and then I sprayed things silver. So this is where we start. Uh, painting the, the boxes with a, a light grey to start with, um, but I decided I wanted to have two different coloured boxes, so I only did half of them, the light colour. Then I put a <coughs> light dab of the, the same colour onto all of the decking plates, just to um, weather them up a little bit. Started to do the lights and realised that I couldn't hang on to them properly, so put some tape around a, a stick and stuck them all to it to make them easier to handle. Painted them a dark grey, and then did dark grey on the boxes and the bigger boxes, including the generator box. Also did some more sort of weathering on these plates. Um, because they're going to be under snow, I wanted them to be a little bit weathered and I didn't want to cover them completely up with the, the snowy thing when I finished. So I wanted them to look a little bit frosty to start with anyway. Then it was um, after I'd painted all of the boxes, the dark grey took a couple of coats to get it to cover the silver well. Um, I then used it to paint a stripe around the, the top and the bottom of those white boxes and I'd also dabbed a little bit of the, when I was doing the decking plates, I dabbed a little bit of the grey with a sponge onto the boxes to weather them a little fraction. Uh, they'll get a little bit more weathering later with a, a wash over the top of them. But the idea is to make them look well and truly used, a um, little bit frosty and very spacey so that they look a little bit in keeping with the things that I've seen scattered around the Star Wars universe. So pretty easy just like I said these were just bits of timber that was lying around so the whole cost for all of the scatter for this thing is zero dollars because I already had them. Um, the paint I had left over from a, another job so it's it was a, a very cheap build as far as all that goes. Um, after the painting of all of the boxes was done, uh, I went and decided needed to paint the ice. So the foam that was then glued down will get a, a white base coat. Um, I did the opposite on the, the little boxes to what I had done on the light ones and did the lighter colour on the darker colour. Um, and I think having two different colours boxes is just interesting rather than four that were all the same. Gave me a bit of variety, maybe one's hands luggage and one's Chewy's luggage, I don't know. Uh, then just did some spot dots and things on the the other th things to make them interesting and painted pretend lights, just a light face onto the things that are going on the ground. After everything was painted it was a wash, just a dabby wash on things to um, dirty it up a little bit, accent some of the edges and um, make things again look a bit grimy. So laid them out where I'd done, oh this is where the video ran out. Now I did the, I glued things down and then put the um, the cables on. I made the cables with gap filler, it's just a coloured corking and I just followed where I'd been with um, with the gap filler. So I'd drawn it out and sort of had a look at the pictures on to figure out where things went. So this is it all sort of done. Then I painted the uh, the foam all white so that um, it would make a decent base coat and I did a little bit of dabbing around on the board just to mix it up a fraction. Um, I used the same grey that I'd used for all of the boxes to black out the bit that's going to be the outside um, just to define the edge of the, the model for um, in the cabinet so that it's not part of the interior of the diorama but just black. Um, it looks good and I was happy with that result. From there it was paint the ice so I um, masked up 
and got a dark blue. Uh, these were colours that were lying around, and I started with a really dark bluey grey, and um, just to find some of the areas on the board and some of the areas on the, the ice based on some of the pictures that I'd seen, trying to just make it not boring, basic white. Um, I'll let you watch. It's it was some um, fun. Air rushing is always fun uh, when you can get the thing to work. Behind the scenes, there was quite a lot of cleaning up that had to be done, um, but I won't go. I won't do the the cleany bits because I don't think that's interesting video. Uh, if you want to know, I always wash my my um, airbrush out with water, usually because I'm using acrylics, followed by some airbrush thinner. I never when I've cleaned it out, I use cotton bud and um, cotton wool to to clean out the the gun when I'm after I've rinsed it a couple of times. But when I use the thinner, I don't ever spray it right out. I always leave a little bit of thinner left in the gun, so that I haven't if there's any bits they don't really dry inside the gun is the intention. So this was just trying to to shoot the edges and put a few ice cracky sort of marks into the the ice with the the darkest colour, and then mottle around on the board a little bit again just to give the impression of the the ice and snow sort of variation in colours on the, the board. I changed from the dark blue after I was happy with the result for it. Um, I changed to a lighter blue, which we'll see in a minute. I didn't want to overdo the dark blue because I knew that there was more colours coming over the top. And... Um, you can always go back and put more, but it's a bit painful to try and adjust when you've done too much. Uh, I was keeping in mind uh, where people will view it from in order to um, try and get capture the most interest and to not worry about the places where you won't see so much. Um, the Falcon will cover up quite a lot of the detail in the centre of this, so I did lighter detail things rather than be particularly tricky. In all of the production shots there are more hoses lying around than I did but again I it's it, the model is the the actual toy and the figures are the thing this is just the stand that I'm putting it on. So with all of the dark colour done um, the next thing was to do the light one. I didn't glue that box down because I knew I was going to be painting around it and I didn't want to cover it with paint and also I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen when the, the snow went down. So now, after the dark one, I went on with a, a fairly bright blue, a really obvious blue, not a bluey grey. Same thing, try and find edges to highlight, try and um, make it look a little bit icy. Um, I'm certainly not the world's expert on what ice faces look like, so it's all hit and miss, a bit of trial and error here and there. I've really enjoyed the outcome of this project. I um, very much had fun with the build, even though it was, for me, um, a couple of months in the making, because there's a, a fair few stops in between the initial cutting. I've had a couple of jobs to do and the final outcome but um, I'm really happy with the way that it's displaying. When I had done all of the the blue on both the blues, the bluey grey and the light blue on there, I really liked it and I almost left it this way, but I thought that it um, might end up looking a little bit comic-y, a little bit more like the comic books because of the colours. So I decided to soften them off a little bit with, with some airbrushed white as well and just to have the, the colour showing through from the airbrushed white. So I got, um, these are just basic acrylic paints. The first two colours are just testers that you get from a paint shop and the white is just an Aldi, one when the Aldi has their art paints for sale and I just thinned it with um, airbrush thinners to get it to where I was happy with the consistency to spray. So this backs off the colour quite a, a lot, putting the white over the top of it but um, I still think it's better than having it look 
comicky. I might take this opportunity to say hello to Paul and Lenny and Jeffrey. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the last three. Hey, Jeff, that car sold, mate. Sorry. Um, somebody saw the value in it. But um, we'll have to hold out for a WRX, I guess, after all. So anyway, um, the white, I think, looked looks better over the top of the blue, just having a little bit of the blue showing through, I think is a little bit more icy. And um, so then I went around and just same thing again, covered up a little bit of the, the, the strikingness of the blue with some white. It's all season to taste. You, you do what you're doing until you're happy with it. If at any time I had felt that I had overdone the colour, I would have just gone back with some colour and redone it. So if you're thinking about doing, you know, if you're new to airbrushing or you're new to modelling or whatever, there's quite not many things that you can really do to completely muck up a, a thing irreparably. Um, sometimes you can't fix you might have covered up some detail if you put too much paint on sometimes you might have um, you might need to re-put some colors in um, you can damage stuff I suppose but generally you just back and forth until you're happy with it I decided with the white to do some some lines which you're seeing here to try and give some sort of a vein look to the the snowy bit um, uh, most of the ones on the ground will probably be covered by the, the ground cover scatter. So then it was mask up the boxes. Um, I wanted to, I decided to have a go with spray adhesive for putting the snow down. Because this snow is stuff that I actually um, swept up off the floor at a painting thing, as I said, I decided not to, I didn't know exactly how it was going to go, so I decided to use spray adhesive. The cotton wool was just to mask off some of the boards and some of the little lights so that the spray adhesive didn't spray on all of them. Um, I won't do this again. Uh, spray adhesive is not a quicker way to go about it. Uh, it left clumps on the, the ground and as it was, I still had to seal it all when it was finished. So the if I was to do this again, I would just go the long way and um, paint it glue on and smooth it around so I left this overnight to dry and then um, tipped all of the excess snow off pulled the cotton wool off while it was up gave it a light dust to try and get rid of the extra loose stuff and to expose some of the, the things on the bottom again um, when I'd done it I realized that the um, snow was I had when I'd swept it up there was a little bit of dirt in amongst it all as well so I sealed it off with some hairspray lacquer and then um, again wasn't entirely happy with the way that that sealed off so instead I decided to go with the traditional method of just getting your blue water and um, detergent mix and lay it on my spray bottles kept clogging up so I went and grabbed an old spray gun and just sprayed the board with that uh, scattered some more around where I saw some blank spots and things and then when that was done I still wasn't entirely happy with the amount of um, other colour that was showing through, some of the gritty colour so I got some of the white again and did a really light dry brush over things to try and um, even it out a little bit make it just a little bit whiter and not so yellow in comparison to the other stuff that's around. Um, big brush, a little bit of paint, scrubby, 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 and tried to get the direction for the um, where I was, where you're looking from, so that things look white. So we're almost at the end. This is dressing it up to give you a flyover. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed the build. Um, there's some funky photos coming in a minute just to show you the... Um, where it ended up and um, there it is thank you for sticking with me if you've stuck through this far um,
that's the Han and Chewie that come with the Millennium Falcon set. Uh, Chewbacca of Empire Strikes Back with the Minoc Hunt. Um, Chewie Welding from Hoth Base. Uh, forgotten <laughs> that droid's name. Uh, that is the Chewbacca from the. That's Chewie from the. When um, Episode One, I think it was, came out, and it was the retrospective look. And then they're the just Han and Leia, three and three quarter inch figures before there was such thing as a vintage line. So that's pretty much what you'll see if it's in a cabinet. So here it is. It's in the display cabinet. And um, I think it looks good for where it is. I've been able to put some other things around it, so that's been really cool. Um, the, the angle from the other side, and I may still put some Echo Base stuff around, and then some, some more shots just of the rest of the Melanin Falcons. So thank you very much for watching. And please consider the Patreon thing that I'll talk to you about in a second. Hey, before I lose your attention completely, I'd like to give a shout out to a young Australian author that's up and coming. If you really like fantasy, uh, I can totally recommend to you A Collision of Victory and Disgrace. It's on Patreon. Um, you can find it at Patreon Shemanigans. And um, she, the info's up on the screen. She also does a Redbubble site, which will come up on the screen in a minute. But it's a really good story, and this is a, a young writer that's trying to make a bit of a way in the world. Uh, the prices start at $1 and go up to $10 a month if you want to really support her. And the $10 a month one gets, it, gets you it personally read. Uh, at the moment, I've been informed that it's about a third of the way through. It's been going for a while now, but if you sign on now, you get all the months that have preceded it, so you can certainly catch up and get right into it. Uh, if you'd like to support that particular young writer and, and authors like her, then please do and go go and check out those websites or go to Reb Trouble and get yourself some really good artwork. This is not a paid sponsorship. I don't do my YouTube for commercial anything. I don't get paid for any of it. But this particular author I um, know really well and I think that it's worth plugging and trying to help people as they try and get a start-up in the industry. Thank you. Have a really fun day. Bye.